At Bendigo Bank, we like to help communities grow. We concentrate on delivering you great products and services. Oh, I like you so very much. So much in fact, I gotta wake you up. It's not that I have Because we know that if you grow, you the community will grow with you. At the Bendigo, it starts with you. Welcome back to the Geelong Cricket Show as we move into our review of the Geelong Cricket Association and round 11. Uh, of 13, 11, 12 and 13, lucky three to go. And at the moment, Grovedale still sit on top of the table ahead of St. Joseph's, equal on points and only a very small amount of percentage uh, between the two of them. But uh, Dean Armstrong, South Barwon's effort last week was undoubtedly the highlight with, as we say, South Hornstein coming to uh, the forefront. Brad Hornstein making 104 not out, and uh, Darren Hornstein, his brother, taking four for 27. And also the clash between Grovedale and St Joseph's, where the spinning of Rick Humphreys and Daniel Fanning, who took four for f combined figures of four for 45 from 20 overs in the 50-over contest, and their accuracy restricted Grovedale to eight for 199 in reply to St Joey's four for 202. Your comment? Look, uh how close is this, Graham? You look at uh, you know nearly the the top uh, what eight sides are all uh, well obviously uh, Belpost Hill and Leopold now cannot make it. The uh, the six will remain unchanged, Graham, and uh, there isn't much between a lot of those sides. And and uh, look, North Geelong uh, drawing with East Belmont last week, uh, just showing how even the competition is. Look, uh, Grovedale sit on top at the moment as we speak, but uh, that could change. I think St Joseph's might actually finish on top at the end of the season, and uh, I don't think South Barwon can creep up too much higher from where they sit. So uh, um, it uh, really uh, poses some questions as to who can win the Premiership this year. I think any one of the top six could. South Barwon do have uh, Anderton back into their side, and with... Uh, Brad Hornstein making runs, they could easily uh, cause some upsets. East Belmont have always been a, uh, a formidable side uh, during the season. Uh, they have some uh, strike power there with uh, Bars, Lara, Danny Hughes and uh, Banbury. And Geelong West have a, uh, an abundance of batting talent there. They're bowling a little bit uh, light on. And uh, then St Joseph's with uh, you know Morgan and co there. And Grovedale, uh, obviously, uh, Peterson is a key player for them. Dean Armstrong has made the prognostication the top six will not change in GCA Division 1 with three rounds to go. Tim Mitchell, your quick thoughts. No, I think I agree with Dino there that the, the top six appears set. The real interest role though, is going to be sort of what order they actually finish in. There's some really interesting games coming up. You'd almost have to agree with Dino on the fact that St. Joseph will probably win their last three looking at their draw if they can get up this weekend when they take on Geelong West, which is probably the key game for them. They've then got Geelong City and North Geelong, two games they'd be favoured to win coming home. So would not surprise if St. Joseph's finished top of the table. But then from there, come finals, who knows what's going to happen because South Bowen currently sitting sixth, East Belmont currently in fifth position. Those two sides are, are, have shown at the right time of the season in probably the last two or three years that they're sides that are capable of winning premierships. So I think the key for every single side in the GCA competition is going to be that they're top two or three fire because a lot of those sides have sort of been relying on the likes of maybe Hornstein, Hughes, Banbury, just these sort of guys for the whole season. If those guys maybe have a day off, then who knows? It's That, that could be the difference in our finals game. I actually think toss of the coin come the finals is going to count for everything. If runs on the board will, will mean everything in these finals. You've seen St Joseph's made uh, 202 on the weekend and uh, beat Grovedale by batting first. Runs on the board, Graham. If you've got them, you've got to get them. Round 11 today is the first of a two-day game again and uh, the top four sides play each other. So it's going to be very interesting as far as the mix of the top six will be after round 11. And in the big one, fourth place Lara take on first place Grovedale out at the Lara Recreation Reserve, out there at Mill Road at the Stake Pit. Dino, your unbiased views on this one. Well, Danny Hughes was superb last week, making 100. Uh, their bowling attack is uh, quite good. Uh, strong batting lineup uh, at home. Uh, Grovedale had a little bit of a hiccup last week, but I think uh, their overall uh, evenness in their uh, side probably just prevail in a very tight contest. 
at home at Lara. Tim, uh, can Christopher John Banbury lead his men across the line? No, I think he can. I'm feeling a bit of an upset here, Rollo. Lara at home are going to be a very tough side, carrying momentum after their big win last weekend. So I think Lara have the capabilities to knock off Grovedale and just send a bit of a shudder and just uh, add another title contender to that uh, GCA mix. And in the other big game, two plays three. This one is up at the Russell Zampatti Oval. GCA website, it is not the St Joseph's College main oval. It is the Russell Zampatti Oval, where St Joseph's in second place take on the Geelong West Rams in third place. Dino, will the home ground advantage that very picturesque ground on top of Heritage Hill see the St Joseph's side over the line? I think it will. I think uh, St Joseph's will win this game. Geelong West uh, were comfortably, comfortably defeated by South Barwon last week. Um, and I think that uh, St Joseph's have uh, got enough uh, batting and bowling talent there to uh, to beat Geelong West uh, in a very close game. Tim, your thoughts? I have to agree there. St Joseph's just look to be getting everything together at the right time of the season, and I think Geelong West little hiccup last weekend. Momentum just means so much at this time of the season, Graham, and would not be surprised if Geelong West dropped two, and then from there they've got Grovedale again next weekend, so they might be one that slip in the, in the next couple of weeks. They've been going so well, Geelong West, but... Look, it's going to be tight, I think, but St. Joseph's, they just have the medal and so many good quality players that will get them over the line at home. In the other, uh, the two uh, fifth and sixth side, East Belmont, uh, they take on Newcomb and District uh, out at Winter Reserve, which, as you could see from uh, our uh, ground report with uh, Graham Scannell, and thank you very much to uh, the East Belmont Cricket Club, Graham Scannell and Larry Elliott for their hard work and cooperation uh, uh, we really enjoyed it, but uh, the ground looking in magnificent condition up against Newcomb and District should be a good win for uh, East Belmont. And in sixth place, South Barwon should hang on to that as they come up against the Geelong City Sharks down at the South Barwon ground. Um, Dino, we've got a retirement to announce as far as uh, GCA Division uh, 1 is concerned. One of Leopold, or he's been around a few, he's been a journeyman, but uh, I understand one of the uh, GCA greats has Renounced his retire announced his retirement. Well, he announced it uh, last Saturday, but I don't think it's official. But uh, yes, I think uh, Darren Kittle has uh, retired from uh, GCA cricket, so uh, he'll be uh, sadly missed by uh, all the players at Leopold and obviously uh, all of the uh, players that did play against him. Uh, so uh, good luck to uh, what he does in the future. Um, another quick mention, uh, Graham, is uh, Scott Lindsay got a hundred on the weekend uh, playing for Geelong City. So uh, congratulations to Scott Lindsay. And I've also mentioned uh, Danny Hughes, who got 100 as well. And uh, I think the other bloke who got 100 and hit his side to victory was uh, Brad Hornstein. So 300s in uh, GCA Division 1 on the weekend. Congratulations to the Barwon Rockets under 16s and under 14s. As they move into their grand finals on February the 1st. Also, congratulations to Merger Bullock and making their race for the finals. And to Anarchy in GCA Division 3 as they wrapped up. Victory number one for the season. Go the pouncing, bouncing kangaroos. Toothy Moore, you're doing a great job. Don't forget, if you've got a comment, you've got any correspondence you'd like us to look into, and in particular, your views on where you feel the Geelong Cricket Association final should be played, Raw07 at bigpond.com. Hopefully next week, we'll be talking with Damien de Goldie, who's the chairman of the grounds committee, to explain the process to us. Until next week, enjoy your cricket. And Rollo saying thanks to Tim Mitchell and Dean Armstrong and catch ya. At Bendigo Bank, we like to help communities grow. We concentrate on delivering you great products and services. Oh, I like you so very much. So much in fact, I gotta wake you up. It's not that I have words. Because we know that if you grow... The community will grow with you. At the Bendigo, it starts with you.